I've never done any beer or alcohol projects ever. I think this will be my first packaging project. Oh no, actually this is my first time doing beer or alcohol. Oh no, I've never done uh, beer or alcohol. This is Blind, a brand strategy design consultancy based in Santa Monica, California. Since 1995, Blind has used the power of design to help diverse clients reach their customers and stand out in the marketplace. In this series, you'll get a rare glimpse behind closed doors and see the process of rebranding a company from start to finish. This is Building a Brand. Before we begin this episode, let's get to know the primary design team that will be working on this project. Sang Chung, Min Cho, and Emily Shea. They're all graduates of Art Center College of Design and have been working at Blind for several years. Each of them, along with the extended team at Blind, bring unique design specialties and sensibilities to the table. These differing perspectives will help Blind explore a range of design solutions for their client, Hamilton Family Brewery. All right, so we're gonna talk about Hamilton Family Brewery right now. Um, we have just finished the strategy session and now it's time to move on to the next phase of the engagement. The challenge in the discovery session is to really understand what the client is talking about. And using words to describe images is often challenging. And so when we move into the creative brief, we have to take the message from the client and the idea that they have in their heads and then make sure that we're communicating that to the designers in the way that they understand. Now, we work with a design team that has many different people from many different backgrounds. And so communication is just a massive challenge in this phase. What is a creative brief? A creative brief is a meeting with the internal team where we give them a high level overview of the entire project. We surface insights from our discovery session, like the goals, the challenges we face, we get into the users and what's important to them, talk about the brand attributes, and then we define a very clear set of creative parameters so that they can design within. By the end of the meeting, we have clear assignments so each designer can go off and start working on the deliverables for the project. In order for the designers to best understand the setting the new brand will initially live in, Ben gives them background on the tasting room. The tasting room has a pretty unique vibe. It feels like a family garage. And that's why, you know, when we looked at the user base, they really appeal to people who like breweries because these people can go out, they can have a beer, a really high quality beer, in an environment that's not a bar. They have this saying, it's like, it's your garage, we just brew beer in it. The person that we chose to speak to is a mother who frequents the brewery during the day with her kids because it's family friendly, they have games and stuff. They have free juice boxes for the kiddos. It's dog friendly because they have a patio. So she hangs out there, she like meets her other mom friends there during the day. And then at night, it's a great place to go out with her husband because he's into beer, she likes the environment, and they can kind of escape the family that way. Okay, so look and feel. These are the words that they highlighted. Reliable, welcoming, maker culture, charming, and adventurous. For reliable, what that means is that when you drink this beer, and if you drink any other beer, there's a certain level of consistency. You know the quality is always going to be good. So part of that maybe is represented via a, a design system. Welcoming, like we already talked about the customer service there and just the environment, it should feel very warm and welcoming. It sh I don't think it should feel expensive, you know what I mean? I think that's the wrong direction to go. Maker culture, I think that's trying to capture the DIY feel. It feels like these are handcrafted. There's, there's something about it that feels handcrafted. Um, I, I think that captures the idea of, of maker culture. And the danger there is like, we've done a whole bunch of different stylescapes and they took a look at them. And there were a few that they pointed out that said maker culture to them, but they were very masculine. So we wanna stay away from um, being a polar, like masculine or feminine. We wanna you know, ride that lane right down the middle with still conveying that maker culture kind of thing. I think there was one in particular for 450 Alaskan that we could look at together that kind of captured some of these things. So between maker culture and adventurous definitely captures both of those. So we could look at that. Charming, I think the thing with charming, Ben, what did- They had like, they wanted, to, they wanted to convey a sense of wit and mm -hmm. funniness. Cause Josh is a really like funny, he's huge. I don't know if you guys saw him here, but like he's 
massive, and he's got this massive personality to go with it. So he's like this big, bombastic guy, but he's very self-deprecating. So he's got this kind of unique sense of humor, and he wants to make everybody laugh and have a good time. He's like your tip, like, he's the guy that you want to go have a beer with. Yeah. And so it's that charm that they want to bring through the brand. And funny, witty, it all felt wrong to them. Charming was really who he is, if charming made you laugh, if that makes sense. The last one on there, adventurous. I think because of some of the flavors that they explore, like one word that came up was experimental. Mm -hmm. It's not like so wild and wacky, you know what yeah, I mean? He does like follow a, a good amount of like rules. Like there's things out there where he knows it's going to, uh, the outcome is going to be in a range of certain expectations. It's adventurous because he's doing things that the big breweries are too chicken to do, if that makes sense. Right, because of their smaller scale. He can experiment, test it, and depending on if the uh, his uh, customers like it or not, you know, mm -hmm. he'll make more or less of that, right? So that's why we're, we're looking at for, for adventurous. That's what that means. So I think if we could capture these five things in there for the look and feel, I think we're going to be in a good place. And I would add heritage to this yeah. because history is really important to this guy. It's a family business. He's considering this his legacy and he wants to make it feel older than it is because he wants to tap into um, the reliability, the authenticity. The other thing is, it's cans for a reason. And this, this kind of goes to show you how Hamilton values experience and product over dollars and marketing. It'd be sexier to put this in a bottle, but it actually makes the beer taste worse. So he's really concerned about the product and it shows because their product is starting to be picked up in these circles. So we want to make sure that we're embracing that his efforts to maintain the product product's integrity. I think the beer company is relatively young. It started uh, in 2014. And so when you think about heritage, you think about, you know, something that's been existing for over 50 or 100 years, but this company is not even five years old. So I think it's going to be a challenge to try to incorporate something um, that has a lot of history in it. After the brief, um, you don't start designing right away because you have to do some initial research. So my step will be uh, first doing research on uh, competitors. So you have to know what's, like, what other stuff is out there. I think that's really key right now. So gathering a like, lot of references. Also looking for other like trends or designs going on right now. I think that's important. And also looking for stuff that our client is looking for, which is they really want to focus on the heritage and look and feel of that. So having those references is key, I think. The next step for me is to go read through the document. Um, I want to read through the user profiles. I want to read through all the looks and feel. Um, there are some things that I need to research. One thing that they mentioned is that they really liked beer labels from the 70s. I don't know how that looks like. I wasn't born in the 70s. I don't know how 70s you know, beer labels look like. So there's a lot of research that needs to be done. We needed to communicate to our design team the two user profiles that we identified in the discovery session. The primary user, is, her name's Jessica. She's kind of a soccer mom that really wants to hold on to that social life. The second user profile that we identified was a beer snob named Kurt. Now this is their aspirational user profile. This is the person that they want more of. Yeah, so that's, that's gonna be our big challenge in the upcoming weeks and in, in this design process is how do we talk to the Jessicas of the world and appeal to the Kurtz? So it's, we're trying to draw this very clear target and we want to hit right in the middle of that bullseye. After taking time to do research, the designers reconvene with Matthew and Ben to talk about the inspirations they found and if it fits into the look and feel discussed with Hamilton during Discovery. Emily will present first. What was the name of your guys' user? Kurt. Kurt. Kurt, Kurt McLeod. All these little forms, I thought it was really cool. You know, they talked about like they liking the overlay, mm -hmm. so this stamp thing is really cool. And then I went into the 50s. The 50s and the 60s ad, they kind of look very similar. They also have this um, illustration going on. 
And then from there, um, I looked at some of the 70s beer cans. They're really cool. They're like shaped differently too. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of them have a lot of flourishes. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was um, kind of what I was trying to go with. There's like modern decorative and fancy decorative. The fancy one, it just has a lot of flourish going on. Wow. And there's like, it's like very type heavy mm -hmm. and it looks really cool. Those labels with the color, mm -hmm. combining the flourish with the color is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. That definitely modernizes it a bit more. Yeah, I respond really positively to that for this. And the, the use of color in comparison, it's, it's, it's almost a nice contrast, especially with, like with that Sonoma Brothers. You get the tan up top and then the lower part is more of like a retro color still, but it's bright, it's fun, you know? Right. So all of these are all very type heavy. You mentioned that they want to print it on bottle caps. Yeah, it feels like it's from a time that like the brand could be older than it actually is. So there's, there's a lot of things that I think that are working for this, for sure. So that's, that's very interesting. The only downside to that is it may look a little bit premium for what they want to do. Yeah, uh, some of the ones where they're printed in gold foil and right. so that's black, it looks a little bit yeah. too premium like this one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I realized that too. I tried to stay away from it because they want it to be welcoming instead of exclusive. And then also there's folder for overlays that I found where they liked that stamp thing. Mm -hmm. Where you, there's like signature, it feels really personal. Mm -hmm. And um, for like the limited edition one where you said there's like only a hundred bottles, you could just right. hand write them like this bottle 87 or something. Right. I, I really like those details. Love that. Especially for, for our beer snob. It's like if he sees that and there's like some just custom printed label that we mm -hmm. stick on there, yeah. like that's freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, uh, just direction for you, Emily. I think you have a lot of good things already going. There's plenty to sort through. There was one folder that uh, Ben had called out that looks a little scattered right now. I think let's tighten up. Let's look at this in a stylescape format where you're uh, culling some of these things down. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think some of the things that we had uh, identified, let's definitely put those on there. So all the handmade stuff, the, the custom labels, I think trying to find a bridge between all the ornate heritage stuff and use pops of color to modernize those things and potentially some of the utilitarian um, design aspects like maybe there's a blend of those things that make sense together. And then the other thing too, the first phase of this project is for a logo. So take that, figure out, you know, what are those logos? Do they actually fit in the packaging? What would that look like for Hamilton? Um, and look for those assets and resources as well. Sang is up next. He has the same customer profile as Emily, the aspirational customer. While two designers may have the same profile, it is always the hope that they will bring different visions to their research. So I was um, reading at their user profile, so I know <laughs> like that type of person would like to hold something that's like, you know, well designed and somewhat like because we're focusing on the heritage, but we don't want something looking very dated and mm -hmm. also, but has the modern touch. So you have a lot of shared DNA with mm -hmm. what Emily has, mm -hmm. and but also one thing that you've identified for pe people who's an enthusiast or a nerd about any particular thing, they love physical things, right? Mm -hmm. If you're a nerd about a particular movie like Star Wars, you want the collector's editions of yeah. these things and all the toys that are physical aspects of these. So mm -hmm. I think you touched on something that could be very interesting that we might look at uh, as we, you know, go through these references. From the profile, like, it's a person that, who wants to be always first on stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I think it does need to feel premium if that's the user. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't want us just hold like a normal can, so. Mm -hmm. I think some of the design looks pretty premium. I, I really love this kind of stuff, and there's like writing, I mm -hmm. think. And we have similar reference, so. Mm -hmm. But it, it also has to look a um, modern version of it. That was my take. Right. So what's interesting about this row that we're looking at right now is just with the print of these things, they all feel like that they don't have a finish on the paper, mm -hmm. right? It's all matte. 
Right, it's all matte, right? Yeah. You get, it's very porous, so it's like a, a cold press paper or something with a lot of texture on it. Yeah. So I do like that, and that, again, going to the tactile feel of things. Yeah. One thing that I'm just unaware of is these things are cold beverages, you know, once they sweat, once they get into a oh, warmer yeah. thing. Like, 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 is that going to mess with the printing? I don't know. Um, that's just a question, but I do, I like that tactile feel. I just don't know if we would ever run into production issues with that. Definitely a question to ask. Yeah, so we need to follow up with Josh on that. Here's, um, it's pretty scattered so far, so let's, we'll, we'll keep going, but I wanted to point out a couple things. That piece of packaging is awesome. The beer carrier, mm -hmm. right now he has this like hand carved wood thing that it's, it's just plywood, okay. and so it's pretty rough looking. I think that is awesome. Um, and what they do is they actually can beer mm -hmm. right in front of people. So hang on to that reference because we're going to want to reverse engineer that. Can you go back up? There's a yellow packaging there. That guy, the big belly. Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, that right there feels utilitarian. It feels like heritage and it also feels DIY to mm -hmm. me without being overly DIY. Nice. Like it straddles that, nine, that line very nicely. That's pretty cool. That wrap is cool too. Yeah, it's, it's a nice way to do it. Yeah, and that's something that they can replicate very easily. They could have freaking 100,000 of those bags printed and then just notate, just write right on it and twist it over the can, Yeah. be done. Someone, special. like if you're a beer snob or nerd and if it looks that good and it tastes good, mm -hmm. I'll just have it just to keep it, you know? I, I wouldn't even want to open it. Right. <laughs> Right, <laughs> you're right, there's a yeah. preciousness to it, um, especially because uh, these guys would want to showcase this mm -hmm. to a certain degree. So whether you have like an open glass uh, fridge that you could see this stuff in, or like you're taking a photo of it saying like, here's my pick of the week or the, you know, the beer that I just discovered, they want it, it wants to be photogenic, mm -hmm. right? So it wants to look really nice. So the, the level of detail in that packaging, even though it could be very DIY, feels very special and doesn't seem common in the market. Yeah, when, when I'm looking for resources, mm -hmm. I always go to alcohol because the actual product is so cheap to produce that they can actually spend a lot of money on the design of the packaging. So yeah. oftentimes you find great resources. So I don't know yet if there's enough of a distinction between you and Emily. Yeah. I think if you were to go down the road of looking at that uh, boxer reference and maybe of some of the other things that we were looking at earlier, that feels like it's a different direction. I think where you could also double down on is just looking for more interesting packaging. I see. Um, whether or not that makes it in both of yours, we end up combining yours, I don't know yet. Let's, I think both of you guys keep exploring that, but I think there's some good references for packaging and the more interesting DIY looking packaging we can find. Uh, I think, Emily, yours is more on the label side and then yours is actually like, containers and wraps and things, right? Like, if they, I think if we keep those a little separated, then we might have uh, two different directions here. Our third designer, Min, has the primary customer profile. This profile was designed to reach out to Hamilton's established base of customers, folks who are still regulars and help to create the family-friendly atmosphere that Josh and Kristen hope to maintain. All right, Min, so you and Sam both had the user, our kind of our broad user, which is the they're beer enthusiasts. They'll go to the, they prefer going to a beer brewery rather than a bar. They can enjoy themselves over there. It's a little more warm and welcoming as far as the tone, how we speak to them, right? So uh, let's take a look at your references in, in terms of that lens. I just started uh, looking at uh, the historical background. Mm -hmm. I looked at 50s, 60s, their colors and then their type uses in different areas like the industry, like a post movie posters, like fashion, like print industry, like luggage tags, beverage advertisement, and then also their illustration style. Mm -hmm. So let's pause here real quick. So I think there's a there's a range of stuff here, and the thing that I see that's reoccurring is the specific use of colors, right? And let's go all the way down to the bottom. There's a lot of uh, this overprint stuff where they're um, doing passes of different colors and layer on top of each other. 
like the rear window, which I think that's a more contemporary version uh, interpretation, but it's referencing things of the past. And same with the reference above, that illustrated poster with a lot of texture to it. There's something that's fun about that. I don't know that it feels appropriate, and I look at these things and I feel like it's far away from heritage. Even though this is historical from a specific time, I know some of the words that we'd put down was like madmen and stuff like this. I think we were just trying to capture a certain essence of some of the labels from that time and, and how they were drawn. Where I look at these and this is more of a uh, snapshot of the 50s and 60s, right? I mean, me personally, I'm not latching onto anything here, but Ben or anyone else in this room, do you guys feel otherwise? You know, I thought it would. I really did because I pulled a, I pulled a beer can from aesthetic apparatus that looked very, very similar to this. I'll show you guys in a minute. But as we were going through the the images, I just was not drawn to it. I just didn't feel like it was perfectly appropriate. So this is something that I pulled. And now that I look at it after seeing Emily's and sayings, I just I don't know that it's right. I don't know that it's appropriate. And that was the reason yesterday I said when we use the word retro, this is what I was imagining in my mind, and this is the thing that I wanted to avoid. You were using the word retro, and I was using the word heritage. And I think at one point, it sounded like you were saying that they were the same thing. And I was like, no, there's, there's a nuance. We can't use the word retro because retro in my mind means something. And I think retro in your mind felt like something else. And this is the, the challenge with language. Yeah, it really is. So I still think I'm right. And <laughs> listen, retro, I, yeah, Josh kept saying heritage. And, and when the designers went away, they came back with all this or, ornate, like Victorian kind of like flourishy stuff. And I just felt like that was wrong. It was wrong for Jessica. And it was even kind of wrong for Kurt because mm -hmm. we couldn't go all the way masculine on that. So what I wanted to do was like still have a level of heritage, meaning just history to me, mm -hmm. but also bring in the fun, bring in that excitement that they brought to the table. And that was like really that 50s kind of retro campy vibe that I, that I was like, yeah, this is perfect for this project. Right. I, I couldn't imagine that because when I, was, I heard retro, I saw those things and I was like, man, this is too funky. It's like 50s, 60s, and it's so funky. And mm. It doesn't feel right for the brand. But at the same time, there were little elements in there that surprised me. And I, because I wasn't thinking about that, I think this might prove to be a, another direction that we might explore. I don't know, because there are some nice qualities to it and we'll see what the designers come back with. These are cool. I don't know why I'm responding better to this than the last folder we looked at because they're so similar. But I think these are just more <laughs> better executed as far as type lockups. London Pride looks cool to me. It looks a little dated. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be that dated, but man, I'm just, I don't know why, but I'm responding to the crest thing. Yeah, I think definitely we should have a version that we have uh, crest in there, and this shares some of the DNA that you like from Emily's, right? So it's from, ornate. Yeah, actually, from no, both of those. You, well, it. you had the ornate, and then there's the cut of negative space, mm -hmm. right? So that is very similar to that. This. It, just this page alone feels the closest to the 450 Alaskan reference yep. that we pulled. Yep. So again, it's that like Pacific Northwest vibe, but this, some of these are actually well done. Yeah, and all these stamp things, these 40, like I don't think that those would necessarily work as a logo, but those could probably work as details, right? If we're trying to show the different information on the beer, like the color and the taste, the notes, like that might be an interesting way to approach it. Okay, so I think what we can do from here is I think each of you have a pretty strong direction to move forward with. So the interesting thing about this project, when you get these two people, these two user profiles that you're trying to bring together, the neat thing is that the designers weren't able to find a single reference, a single source that looked exactly the way that we wanted. And so the next phase, moving into stylescapes, they're gonna have to create that look and feel using multiple different references. So this is a really interesting problem to solve. A stylescape is similar to a mood board, but it's a little bit more refined. So we take all the reference points that we've pulled together, color correct a couple of images, and pull them into one cohesive panorama so that we can look at that and get an overview of what the brand looks and feels like. And I think that's where we're gonna find the right solution for what Hamilton Family Brewery can be. 
And it's so cool because this means that we're breaking new ground. It really does. With feedback from Matthew and Ben, the designers will begin to build their stylescapes. In future episodes, Sang, Min, and Emily will present their stylescapes for approval. And then Ben and Matthew will travel to Rancho Cucamonga to present the final versions to Josh and Kristen. Join us in our next video for Building a Brand. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have a question about the creative brief or the creative process, leave us a question in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about our process and what we do here, check out the links in the description. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because it really helps us out. We'll see you on the next episode of Building a Brand.